Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Hopefully this is going to be a big treat. A lot of the Evil Twin beers are, they're definitely very pricey for me. I mean, uh, uh, Jeffy does uh, the, the brewer, the Vagabond Brewer, that's my Calvary's brother. Jeffy does some really tasty stuff, but their beers are fairly pricey for me here in Virginia. Don't know why that is, because he's brewing them here on the East Coast usually. And uh, this particular one says here, brewed by Evil Twin Brewing in Stratford, Connecticut, distributed by 12% LLC, Brooklyn, New York. This is their Ashtray Heart, uh, 12 fluid ounces, smoked porter, 8.9% alcohol by volume. And uh, here it says 03515, so I'm saying that's the 35th day of 2015, so if that's the case, this beer was bottled in February of 2015. Uh, and this beer should keep for 8.9%, it's almost 9%. This beer should keep 3, 5, maybe even 10 years at 8.9%. I don't know what would deter you from being able to sell this beer for a long period of time. Uh, unless some of the smokiness is going to fade. Uh, uh, it shouldn't be a hot forward beer. So no, that's going to fade. So. Uh, this is a 2015, but it was done in March, and we're in here in December now. So, uh, let's see what it brings to the table. I'm a big fan of theirs, other than they're a pricey beer for me to buy here. 8.9% uh, there, 8.9% there, 8.9% there. So everybody's in unison here. It is an 8.9% beer, and it's got it on, on the label there. And uh, there may be... Uh, some reasons why you couldn't sell their beer, but I cannot think other than maybe losing some of the smokiness over time. But uh, it was done in 2015, so it should be fine for me. So let's see what we got on this one, guys. Uh, commercial description on this one says, oh, Amazingly rich, seductive, dark, and smoky good, smoking good. Yes, a real heartbreaker. We recommend only the truly skillful heavyweight beer champions to battle this awfully addictive and overpowering smoke stout. Be careful because this is the real deal with a minor placebo effect. Makes invalids out of Superman. You reckon? Do you reckon? Well, I've been drinking beer about 40 years now, guys. Done over 1,800 beer reviews. This bottle will cripple my ass up. What do you think? Seriously, freaking doubt it. All right, hopefully it's going to be a good beer, guys. I really do. Uh, I don't have the IBUs listed on either site for this beer. Uh, food pairings for this beer. It says Cuisine's Barbecue, Cheese is Peppery, Monterey, Pepper Jack Sharp, Blue Cheddar, and the meat for this is smoked meat, beef, game, and grilled meat and salmon. Stronger dishes, stronger meat dishes. Glassware's Pint Becker non tumbler Mug Stein Seidel. I'm going to use my favorite glass. I just about use this glass daily, guys, uh, especially on beer review, because it is my favorite glass. A lot of people want to know what this beer, this beer glass is. It's a solvin beer glass. It's a UVIN. This is not a cheap glass. If you're looking for a $5 glass, don't bother. This is a $30 or a $35 glass. It is. It has an etching in the bottom of it. Uh, it's very thick walled. It's not going to break. This will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. Don't put it in the freaking dishwasher. I never do. Hand wash your fine beer glasses. If 
I have never put a beer glass in a dishwasher. Never, ever, ever, ever. Never. Don't do it. Hand wash your beer glass, especially if it's something that you want to take care of. Now, if you don't give a rat's ass, throw them all in the dishwasher and see how many of them crack and break over time. I don't do it. Uh, I cherish my glass, especially this one. I plan to have this glass when I'm 80 years old because I'm going to hand wash it every freaking time I use it. Every time. So, enough said. Enough said. All right. I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. This beer is uh, says not recommended for selling selling unless ABV extends average range. It's almost nine percent. Do you think it extends average range? Yes. So I don't know of any reason why you could not sell this beer for a long period of time unless the smokiness is going to fade. So let's get the cap off of this puppy and get it into the glass. Got some openers, guys. If you need one, give me a shout. Speak now, forever hold your peace. It's going to come to a, uh, a time, guys, where I'm going to stop ordering these openers. Uh, I'm not going to order them and then sell on them for six or eight months. If uh, they stop selling, I'm going to stop buying them. So I'm going to go down to the center here, see what we get. Right down the center, guys. Right down the center. Straight down the center. About a finger and a half head on that. Nice khaki colored off uh, white head. Over and to the light. There is absolutely none, guys. This looks more like a stout than a pour. I'm not getting any red ruby tinges around even the thin part of the glass down here. Good looking beer, but like I said, it looks more like a stout than a porter. We're down to just a tad over a finger of head. Let's get a nose on this one. This comes from Scott. Scott, thank you for sending this to me. Uh, I can get some of the Evil Twin beers here, but I can't get them all. And he was so gracious to send me this one, and I do appreciate it. So thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. To be honest, guys, I'm not getting that heavy smokiness on this. Just a slight hint of some smoke. Not much. Not much at all. Rich caramel, rich burnt malt. Some dark fruit in there. And it's not sweet like the one we did yesterday. It don't have that big sweet back end like a barley wine does or a strong dark ale, Belgian ale does. Just a hint of the, of the smokiness in this beer. Now, maybe it's going to have more in the taste, so let's find out. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Scott. Thank you, brother. A little more smokiness in the taste. We have to get the smoke in the taste. got a rich smokiness to it too. Very smoky in the taste. Wow. That is tasty. Big smoky flavor in the taste. Wow. It's like you're drinking this by the campfire and inhaling all the smoke. Very nice. Very, very nice. Ashtray. That's what the calling is. Ashtray hard. I'm getting that. I am getting that. This would be a prime candidate to fire up a Maduro wrapped cigar and sip on this for a little bit. Wow. That would, that would go very well with a nice cigar. Big smoky aroma on the taste. Aroma on the taste. They don't make any damn sense. Big smokiness on the taste. Of course, when I pour this right out of the fridge, 40 degrees, 
Now that I've tasted it, go back to the aroma. I can't smell that smokiness. Mm. It's there. It is there. And, and the more I let it warm up to room temperature, the more that's going to come out. So, uh, wow. Well, i to go back and get in the humidor and so I can find me a nice Maduro wrapped cigar. Sip on this. I go out on the deck. It's a little bit warmer than it has been. Uh, got up to about 65 today. And I think it's still probably 58, 59, maybe even 60 degrees still. It might be a good time to step outside and, and sip on this and, and, and fire up that cigar. What do you think? I'll be right back, guys. Let's see where this one ends up. Pretty impressive right now. All right, guys. I'm back. Got just a little left here. Very tasty beer. Uh, definitely giving the smokiness of it. It's got the uh, the date here on the side of the bottle, uh, 35th day of 2015. So this was done in February sometime. Very nice. <coughs> Other than it being a fairly pricey beer, even here in Virginia, uh, it's very tasty. Uh, like I told you earlier, uh, Jeffy does some really tasty stuff other than being a pricey beer. I mean, this beer is pretty much in line as far as price-wise goes with a lot of the imported beers uh, from Germany and over in Europe. Uh, but he does some really tasty stuff, and the bigger beers are going to be a little more expensive, but his is a little... He knows he brews a good beer, and, and they charge accordingly. So, and a lot of people tell me that they can get this beer a little cheaper than I can get it at. But here where I buy my beers, this their beers are fairly pricey guys. They're they're very they're very pricey. Um believe it at that. So very nice, nice smokiness with this beer. Scott, thanks again for sending it to me. Very nice smokiness aroma on this. Now that's warmed up to room temperature, uh, I'm getting the dark fruits, the caramel and the toffee. The smokiness, very pleasant. Final chug. Very tasty. Went very well with the cigar that I was smoking. I think I was finishing up a uh, Undercrown uh, from Dewar States on this one. Went very well with it. Very nice. Guys, uh, for me, 9 out of 10. Uh, if I was putting a numeric rating on this one, it would probably be a 97 or a 98. Very nice. Over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 86 in the very good range. I think that number's a little low. Their numbers usually are. Not always, but usually are. And over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer says overall 97 and 98 in a style. That's about where I would put it. Uh, 97 or 98 for sure there, guys. It's a very tasty beer. Not quite to the 10. But very tasty, very enjoyable, very nice. So if you've had this one from Evil Twin, their Ashtray Heart, uh, which is a smoked porter, let me know what you think, guys. I enjoyed this one, and I would buy it again. It's, uh, it's pretty tasty. But it's so pricey that it's not, one of, it's, it's not going to be your everyday drinker. It's a special occasion beer. When you're paying between 8 to $10, maybe even a little bit more sometimes, for their 12-ounce bottles, uh, uh, they're, they're a little a little rich for my blood, so but very nice. Uh, Scott, I don't know what you paid for this one. You may be able to get it cheaper than I can here. I've not seen this particular one here, but uh, I can get some of their stuff. I don't get everything that uh, that Evil Twin does, but uh, I do get some of their stuff. So this is very nice. I enjoyed it. So if you've had it, let me know what you think, guys, and maybe we'll get us a special guest tomorrow. I'm thinking we're going to do the... Uh, the Firestone Walkers uh, Velvet uh, Merkin tomorrow, so maybe I can get somebody to set in and give us a hint of what she thinks of the beer. So let's see what happens. Come on back tomorrow. See you then.